Pit Lab PGH and Moving to Live are podcasts. We firmly believe moving is a lifestyle, not just an activity. Typically, we do audio podcasts. In Pittsburgh, we go to people who are movers, talk to them. Moving to Live, we find movement professionals, tell their stories, and learn what they do so that we can learn and so we can educate you too, all with the idea of movement as a lifestyle. In this time of COVID-19, so many people have been forced to move home. They've either been put in self-quarantine or maybe their businesses have said move to working at home. And we realize that movement is important. All kinds of fitness facilities are putting movement activities on, but nobody's really spent a lot of time giving you some ideas of maybe novel ways to work at home or to adapt your home lifestyle so that it can involve movement. So I've been fortunate or unfortunate enough since I started working at California University of Pennsylvania to work from home after the second year I was there. So I've been working from home for almost 15 years. There's some positive effects as everybody's finding out. There's some negative effects. One of the biggest positive effects for me, you can probably see over here, you'll see a couple of dogs and that'll explain how I've set up my office somehow. So we've got three ideas or three things to consider since it looks like this is going to go on a couple of weeks. The first idea is think about experimenting with a standing desk. Now some people say standing is or sitting is the new smoking. We really don't agree with that, but if you can stand, you find that you're active. I've actually talked to a number of people. They find that they're much more active thought-wise when they move. So a lot of people get their ideas, including me, when they're walking. I find when I'm on a conference call, if it's on my cell phone, I'm probably walking around my house rather than sitting down or standing. So what I do with my desk is I have a standing desk. I have a desktop here with two monitors. If you don't have a Vera desk, which is one of those adjustable standing devices, I can move this down so I can sit down with it or I can have it standing, then try different size or heights of cardboard boxes and books so you can get an idea of whether or not you like it. What you're looking at is you'd like to have your keyboard where your elbows are bent to about 90 degrees or maybe a little bit greater angle. And if you look, when my hands are on the keyboard, my wrists are not cocked into a flex position or an extended position. They're quite neutral. So you can adjust the height with that with different length uh, or different size books, different sized cardboard boxes. And if you like it, then what you can do is you can potentially purchase a Vera desk, which is adjustable and sits on top of another desk. The second thing that I've learned is just like sitting, it's very easy to slump. If I spend some time standing, it's very easy to get in a position of rather uncomfortable posture or stand there with my knees locked. So I started experimenting probably the second or third year with standing desks with different types of wobble boards. One of my favorites was the Indiegogo project or Indiego project. This is a fluid stance. For those of you in the rehab setting or the fitness setting, it doesn't have a whole lot of wobble like a, a fitness wobble board, but you can just kind of sit there. You can move around with it and you shift your weight, brings into play a little bit of muscle activation. And look, it's fun. Not everybody enjoys everything about their job. So doing something on a balance board is kind of fun. What I realized, and you'll see in a picture in just a second, is with dogs at home, they sometimes like to be around me. And unfortunately, a dog that I've since lost liked to lie with her nose on my toes, and I was afraid I would squish her. So when my dogs are around, I don't use the fluid stance. I use something else. I use a Pona Ola board. Excuse me, a Pona Ola board. This has inflatable orbs so that when you set it on the ground, there's a little bit of space so the dog's nose goes underneath it. The advantage that this has, and I'll move this out a little bit, is you don't wobble, but you kind of stand there and you're on orbs of air. Now what I have to do when I use the wobble boards is I have to adjust the height of the desk. So again, neutral wrist position. But pretty much what I do is I'm always on some sort of a wobble board, although recently, Thanks Rogue Fitness for costing me lots of money with really cool home workout ideas. This is their sand dune stepper. This is different levels of foam and you could actually stand on this and kind of move a little bit in place, kind of rock back and forth. The whole idea is have a variety of surfaces to stand on so that you're not just standing in just one position. The other thing I'd encourage if you're trying a standing desk, don't do it all day. Do it for a set period of time 
So our third idea is use your computer, use your watch if you've got an iPhone or a smartwatch or just a simple stopwatch and set it so every 15 minutes or so you can kind of pause, maybe do a few shoulder rolls, maybe get up and walk around the house so you're not holding a position and then after three or four hours realize that you have some muscle soreness or you've gotten yourself in a poor posture position. So FitLab PGH and Moving to Live recognizes that movement is a lifestyle. We have to work. If we're working from home, try these three tips. A standing desk, minimizing how much time you stay in one position, no more than 10 or 15 minutes at a time, and different things to stand on to give you different surfaces so you can help keep your muscles active. Another podcast that we're bringing to you a little bit different this week, working to help uh, give you a way to work from home and to stay productive.